Hi everyone, I'm Jenny B from Jenny B Studios. That's Jenny with an I. Today we're going to be looking at how I paint material. Um, now this was part of a, a portrait and I have a video up there on Tilly um, and I called the portrait How to Paint a Dog. But um, yeah, this is Tilly's favourite blanket and you know it's important when I'm doing a um, pet portrait that I get all the details correct. I'll be using pan pastels. Now these are compressed pastel, soft pastel, um, in little containers um, held together with a binder. It's the first time I've used soft pastel and I must say got a little bit of a crush on that. Um, I'm not sponsored by soft pastel in any way shape or form. I'm not sponsored by anyone. so. Before I start a painting, I also do a double fold envelope which I put at the bottom of my painting for any pastel that's going to fall and in order to do, attract that pastel, I actually spritz a tissue with a little bit of water. To start my um, painting, I'm, I'm actually going to mix those two colours, the magenta and the blue together. And I follow the line of the cloth as I paint. It's really important to follow the line of the cloth um, as, it, as it is when you're putting in say the hair of the pet. So I follow that line through. Now with cloth, cloth can be quite reflective. So it will have a shadow side, it'll have a mid-tone side and it'll have a lighter side. And that's what, um, that's how our eye, when it's looking at cloth, can perceive how it's changed and folded. The layer I'm putting on here is the underlayer, so it's very thin. I tend to paint thin to thick, so my first layers are always thin. Um, often I'll go up to six layers, and I'm painting here on pastel matte paper. Now pastel matte paper, if you haven't um, heard of it before, is a fibre coast paper and comes from France. So here in Australia, we're at the other end of the world, so pastel matte can be quite expensive. Um, it is a paper I use on predominantly all of my commission work. Um, it's a beautiful, lovely paper and I can get some really wonderful effects from it. So. Um, as I'm laying this in, it's nice and thin as I said before and I sort of notice that it looks like I'm scrubbing on the paper and I don't. Um, it's just that I've slowed the action right down so it's a bit deceptive. I actually just pop the pastel in in one stroke, uh, lift, bring it back and stroke it through again. The wonderful thing about pastel is um, it's quite a forgiving medium when you're working with it. Um, now my initial drawing I, I always trace onto pastel mat um, because it's just easier to do and it's not really great for corrective drawing. However, I can use it for corrective painting. Here you'll see that I've added some of that shadow colour into the face of Tilly. And I tend to do that when I'm working. I actually work all over. Um, so if I have a colour, I tend to pop it in. Here I'm going for this rich magenta and I've yet left it as a pure colour. You can see in the cloth that that magenta colour is quite um, predominant in the under colour. So it's wonderful in this technique to actually lay that magenta in as a foundation in my underpainting um, because in the end um, if you sort of really look at the cloth at the end if you pause the video and have a look you'll actually see that magenta color come through now 
You can see how light um, I've actually put this layer in because you can still see some of those shadows. So again, I'm softening up to one edge and leaving the other edge um, quite, quite firm. Or what we call a hard line. So taking that pastel colour right up to the edge and bringing it down again. When I have enough pastel on there, I'll even out um, the pastel. And I'll use quite a broad stroke to do that. With most paintings, you start big and then you work small. Here I'm just popping in a highlight. Um, when you're doing pet portraits, quite often your pets are backlit. I don't know why, but they're quite often they are backlit. And in Tilly's case, she had an open window to the right, an open door to the left, and the room light was actually there on the left. Um, so, you know, there's little snippets of light there. The other thing by putting the indicator in is that because I haven't actually painted Tilly yet, it allows my eye to judge the tones within the painting. So if you don't know what tones are, if you can imagine a strip of paper with white at one end, black at the other, and then you rub a colour across it, um, you'll see that the colour itself doesn't change, but the depth of the colour does change. So you can see how thin that layer is. And this is because I don't want to um, fill the paper too early. It's much easier to add pastel than it is to take pastel away. And that's pretty much the same for whether you're painting in oil, acrylic, watercolour. It's so much easier to add than it is to subtract. Now you can see as we work our way through the cloth up to the right hand side here that there is a lot more dark um, and we still need to to pop in well I still need to pop in that magenta color um, because it, it is there in the cloth all the way through So as I finish um, with that magenta colour, I won't actually come back again with the pan pastels. I've finished that stage. I, I have actually got into a habit now of using the soft tools. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Um, now I'm using a pastel stick, which is um, a colour that I've picked up from Art Spectrum. Art Spectrum is an Australian company. Again, I'm not sponsored. Now because I have that colour there, it is also going to reflect into Tilly's muzzle. <coughs> so even though Tilly looks absolutely wonderful here, just watch the magic happen as we add that continuation of colour through. I'm putting on the lights here now. And I'm putting that all the way through on that cloth. And you'll notice that I come up and add some of that light back into Tilly's fur. White fur is never white. Um, it's made up of a range of colours. And in my other video I, I can show you that. Um, but you can see here now I'm just adding, adding that beautiful colour just where I see it. So. It's only in certain areas, it, it's not the, the full length of the hair in most cases, it's just a little tip here and there. So what happens is as the light comes in, um, now I think Tilly was facing a mirror 
to have so much reflection of this this particular color in a fur so as the light is coming in it bounces back I want to give a special shout out to Michelle who's a fantastic lady um, she's a, a absolute wonderful lady and uh, she commissioned me to do this portrait for her of Tilly um, and is allowing us to see that here today now all of a sudden you know Tilly's face looks so much brighter and lighter I'm just uh, softening the edges down at the underfold of the material and truth be told right now if I had have left that um, top layer as is it still would have looked like a lovely blanket but it wouldn't have looked like Tilly's blanket and it's very important for me when I'm doing clients work um, to to get all the details correct because you're not just painting a dog you're painting the memory of a dog um, a memory of a friend a memory of someone you loved so it's important to get those details correct now the whole painting itself took me over 20 hours of work so a lot of detail goes into them and here I'm just focusing on the right hand side you can see how that depth of color when I go to put in the polka dots not all of them are going to be the same tone or shape some of them are going to be quite circular some of them are going to be quite oval and again they've got to follow the line of the cloth so some of those polka dots come in a vertical some in a horizontal some of them will only be a half circle as they go with the fold and as I said before um, you know pastel is so easy to correct and here's a prime example I wasn't quite happy with the um, the fold there on the right hand side so I corrected it guys I want to say thank you so much for watching this video I hope you like it and subscribe you can catch up with me on Facebook and YouTube my name's Jenny B and that's the final painting of um, Tilly so here's some of my other work if you have any suggestions you'd like to see other demonstrations please pop your positive comments in the comment section below I'd love to meet up with you all and it's been such a pleasure to present this for you today I'm Jenny B thank you very much <music>